at the height of the Cold War, the military powers developed various types of military aircraft to gain advantage over the other. In the field of strategic heavy bombers, for the West, two of the biggest and most formidable bombers were the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress and the British Anvil Vulcan. Both of these remarkable aircraft actually flew in the same year, yet the B-52 is still in frontline service while the last Ryan Air Force flight of a Vulcan was in 1993 as a display aircraft. Vulcan has been operating as a nuclear deterrent since the 1950s. It was a delta wing strategic bomber designed to fly at high altitude and the aircraft first took flight on August 30, 1952. The Vulcan B-1 was first delivered to the Royal Air Force in 1956. Deliveries of the improved Vulcan B-2 started in 1960. The B-2 featured more powerful engines, a large wing, an improved electrical system and electronic countermeasures, and many were modified to accept the Bruce Deer missile. Power for the Vulcan came from four Bristol Olympus engines that could power the aircraft to a top speed of 646 miles per hour. During the period from 1956 to 1965, about 136 Anvil Vulcans were built and commissioned to the Royal Air Force. Like other bombers, the Anvil Vulcan was also developed in many different variants, such as Vulcan B-1, B-2, and K-2, of which the most popular was the Vulcan B-2. The Anvil Vulcan had a crew of five and had a maximum takeoff weight of more than 167,000 pounds in the B-1 version and up to 204,000 pounds in the B-2 version. The most impressive thing about the Vulcans was its delta wing configuration. The wings were fashionably contoured to extend outwardly from the fuselage, giving the aircraft its smooth overall appearance and housed the four engines, fuel and main landing gears. Intakes for the engines were intelligently mounted at each wing root, and the entire component ran the length of the dart wing. The bomb bag was centrally held in the fuselage and could be fitted with additional fuel for increased range. The empennage featured a single large dorsal fin extending from about the midway portion of the fuselage. The Vulcan can carry up to 21,000 pounds of weapons stored in the internal bomb bay. Weapons can include conventional or, more importantly, nuclear weaponry. Conventional bombing was 21 of 1,000 pound bombs. Nuclear munitions varied as they were constantly being developed or improved upon, but included the Bruce Deer Mark I standoff missile. The aircraft's early combat service came in the 1982 Falkland Square with the Blackbird missions, seeing them inflict damage on Port Stanley runway, stopping the Argentina Air Force from operating from the Falklands and protecting the British forces. The air raid at the time from Ascension Island was at the time the longest bombing raid in history with Blackbird 1 encompassing nearly 6,600 nautical miles. The Vulcan at the time had switched from a nuclear bombing role to a conventional bomber role, and was the only one of the three V bombers that was able to fly a low level without stressing the airframe. 
The final Vulcans were retired in the 1980s, serving as air tankers. Compared to the US B-52, like the Vulcan, this aircraft was built to carry a nuclear payload, and this is a role that the aircraft can still fulfill. The Vulcan did have a quicker top speed, 646 miles per hour, compared to 905 miles per hour for the B-52, and its agility and lift, thanks to its dirt wing, were unrivaled. It was almost as agile as Royal Air Force fighters of the time. Its lack of upgrades over the years meant it was replaced by aircraft like the Panavia Tornado. Although the B-52 shows that a large strategic bomber clearly has a place in a national air arm.